I'm Zach Flores and this is a surfboard room. Today I'm going to show you guys how to shape them properly and avoid a mistake that 90% of shapers make while finishing off their rails. Let's get into it. Access granted. Rails are super important because they're one of the most used part of your board. Having a really good rail can make you do something like this, and having a really bad rail will make you do something like this. The three major types of rails are up rails, down rails, and 60-40 rails. Up rails are great for long boards, down rails are great for tube shooter kind of stuff. 60-40 rails can go on pretty much any type of surfboard. This board we're going to be doing more of a down rail. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do, after we've done all of the previous steps that we covered in part one, which was making your initial rail bands and getting everything symmetrical, then you're gonna to wanna to figure out what type of rail. This board, like I said, down rail. We're gonna start by putting the board in our rack sideways. When the board's in the rack like this, we'll be able to see the full rail line and make our judgment on where we're gonna start our first cut. For these first passes, I'm going to be deciding the apex of my rail and also how far into the board or how low the tuck is going to go. I'm going to be using the planer to do this. I'm going to be feathering the planer, uh, starting back around where my edge is going to end, all the way up until the further front part of the nose. Feathering the planer, if you guys remember, is opening and closing the shoe. So I'm going to start with the shoe totally closed and just balance it basically right on this edge and we're going to walk it forward slowly taking off little bits at a time in order to sculpt the rail into what we're looking for. My first couple of passes, I feathered the planer just barely open and I took about maybe six or eight cuts. I started the boundaries for where we're going to have the apex of the rail. Now I'm gonna flip the board over and do the same thing to the other side so that we can keep everything symmetrical. Now that we've determined the apex of the rail, I'm going to start turning the bottom of the rail. So I'm going to do the tuck and the edge. I start on the bottom first so that I don't bring the top of the rail down too far. In this whole process, I'm never gonna pass the apex that we've already determined. Now that I've foiled the bottom of the rails on each side, uh, I just do one side and then once that side's finished, I repeat that step on the other side. And so that's the best way to get them even. We're gonna start doing the top of the rail. So I do this in kind of a different way. Most people will start at the top of the rail where it starts to crown and they'll bring all the rail all the way down and connect it to the apex from the bottom side. But what I like to do is I just continue bringing the curve from the bottom all the way up to the deck. This way it ensures that I don't get any really pointy part of the rail coming together and everything flows together smoothly. So 
as you can see, the first band that I put here, I like to make it so that I'm really getting the apex of my rail uh, determined. I like to leave a flat spot all the way along the rail, all the way back into the tail. I do that so that again, I don't get some crazy angle. Now you're gonna wanna pay attention because this is the hardest part in shaping a surfboard. Leave a comment about who you think is the worst shaper in the world. <laughs> Be sure to hit them up and tell them to watch my videos so they can get better. The reason why that is so difficult is because it takes so much precision, so much precision with the planer to make those fine little passes without putting any big holes in your rail. So as you guys can see, the rail is pretty close to being finished already. And that's because of all the work that we did beforehand to make everything symmetrical and get everything lined up. This right here is where most shapers will stop and say, I'm finished with the rails. I don't need to use the planer anymore. Or once they get the basic shape of it, they'll go ahead and take screen or a sandpaper and run it along their whole rail like this. The reason why you don't want to do that is because all you're doing is mushing together your whole rail like mashed potatoes. It doesn't look good and you can tell the second you look at it that the rail wasn't completed properly. You have to keep going from this point I still use the planer until the rail is almost completely finished. Then I'll take a shear form, a very fine tooth shear form, run it along the little parts where the bands I couldn't get with the planer, and then finish it off with a sanding block. But you never want to use anything soft on the rails until the rails are completed being shaped. The next part of shaping rails isn't actually shaping rails. What we're gonna be doing now is crowning the deck, using the planer the exact same way to foil the rails. Now we're gonna foil the deck from the rail line all the way up to the top. Make sure you don't make your deck too round and pointy or else it's gonna hurt when you paddle and it's gonna be unstable and it's gonna suck. As you can see, I finished off the deck of the board. I didn't show you that because it's incredibly boring. Um, basically, all you're doing is taking your planer and following your rail band all the way up until it doesn't fit in the rockers anymore. And then just like Big Z said, take long, smooth strokes with every tool that you use. After I've finished with the planer as much as I can, I'll take this fine spoked shear form and make long, smooth strokes from the nose to the tail, blending together all of my little bands from the planer. After I've done all that I can do with the shear form, I take this 80 grit block right here and again, make long, smooth strokes the entire length of the board like this. What you don't want to do is start going at a 45 degree angle or in circles or anything like that because you're just mushing everything together and it ends up looking like a mashed potato. Now that we've gotten the deck crowned and all sanded out, we're gonna tune up the rails. In order to finish off the rails, I'm gonna start on the bottom just like I did the first time with the planer, but now we're going to be using some different tools. To start, I'm gonna use my ultra fine tooth shear form to put the final tuck around the edges in the tail of the board. So 
So what I'm doing is I'm using this to make very fine adjustments along the edge of the surfboard and I'm utilizing my light setup so I can see where those edges are and then I'm just pulling it in, tucking it in little by little until I have it right where I want it. I'm taking my 320 block, it's probably a medium density. I'm going to blend together all of the little lines that I have left from the planer and the little bit of lines from the shear form. So as you can see here in the light, these little dark spots are the dark part of the rail of the surfboard. What I'm doing is I'm taking my sanding block and blending the dark and the light spots together. So I'm basically going to keep repeating the process with the sanding block that I started with the planer. I started on the bottom side of the rail and made my way up and over. So I'm doing the exact same thing, but making very fine adjustments with the sanding block. So think about this step like you're using a pencil to shade in a photo. You're doing the same thing, but you're using a sanding block and you're fading the different lights together that are on the bands of the rails. A lot of people when they get their rails halfway done, they'll just take a sanding block and start going like this at a 45 degree angle and blending everything together that way but the rail still needs to be tuned up. As you can see, I pretty much finished everything here. And check that out, looks pretty good. It's about 98% finished. I have my 600 grit screen right here. I'm gonna show you guys how you want to drag it all the way from the tail to the nose. So, what I do is I hold it diagonally like this. I grab one corner and I take the other corner and I pull it tight. Not too tight so that it's gonna create too much of a straight line, but then you just gently put it on the board and drag it back. So you should only have to do this one, maybe two times per side. So I'll do it twice on the bottom and then I'll do it two or maybe three times even on the top. The reason I have this still squared off is because I'm going to come back later and I'm going to do a little bit of a channel on the bottom, so I want to leave some extra room so that I don't end up messing up my rail. In this video, I've shown you guys how to use screen correctly, how to turn your rails, and a whole bunch of other things. I just finished off the rails. I completely finished them. Next video, we're going to be doing concave, the reason why we finish our rails first is so that when we start putting in our concave, we're not gonna mess up our rocker to our rail line. The reason why we finish our rails completely first before we do concave is so that we don't end up messing up our rail line by lowering the rail when we're adding our concave. It's gonna be the same exact rail line that we wanted to, and now we can adjust the concave and everything afterwards. Thanks for watching guys. We're going to be coming out with merch pretty soon. Get some t-shirts, hats, underwear, thongs, <laughs> all that good stuff. So yeah, make sure to pick that up so that we don't end up homeless. Whatever you do, don't forget to ring that bell so we don't starve to death. <laughs> make sure to subscribe so we don't end up dead. <laughs> If you see my wife, two dogs and I inside of a Sienna sleeping on the side of the road, that's because you didn't subscribe. <laughs> and thanks to all of you guys who watch and don't subscribe because we all know you still live with your mom. <laughs> Love you guys. I feathered the planer. Now that I've... And make sure you don't put pencil Niger. <laughs> so think about this step like
So think about this step, like, so, 